Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, May 7th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's 90L spinning away off the southeast coast, and like we talked about yesterday, this warm frontal feature to its northeast is beginning to decay, and you see these clouds thinning out here as this moves off toward the northeast, and what's left behind is the low-level circulation, and uh, you can see it becoming a little more circular, and it's clearly a closed low now, where air is rotating all the way around it. But the issue right now in getting this well-defined enough to uh, be named Subtropical Storm Ana by the NHC is that there are multiple lobes where the center could consolidate. There's one here, you can see a naked swirl right about here uh, where there are no thunderstorms, but there's a couple more in this band of convection on the west side. If we look at the aircraft recon observations, this is the Air Force plane right here as of this recording flying through the system. We have an area of enhanced spin here near the eastern end of the convection and another one in the middle of the band over here and these red wind barbs actually indicate two reports of 65 mile per hour winds at flight level from the plane and there's a little bit of a wind shift here as well and this is a smaller weaker little center than this one down here which has lower pressure uh, but uh, there are multiple areas of spin in here and there's another one up here where there's no clouds so there's no singular well-defined area of circulation that we can call the true center of the system and until we have that uh, this does not fully meet the criteria for a subtropical cyclone and the NHC may be looking at how much convection it has as well as organized convection is another requirement but whether or not it has a name right now it's generating tropical storm force winds over a large region of the offshore area of South and North Carolina right now and heavy rains and gusty winds are already moving ashore in South Carolina with this convective band and we saw from recon that there are winds over 60 miles per hour in some of these thunderstorms offshore so this is already generating very blustery weather and certainly dangerous for boaters in this region and uh, the issue with this system going forward is you can see it's stalled out over what is very warm Gulf Stream water it's hit the sweet spot where the warm tongue of water is right about in here where I've outlined and uh, this is the area where uh, the water is warm enough to support tropical convection and could aid the strengthening of the system over time and if we look at the upper pattern right now this is the GFS 24 hours from now valid tomorrow morning and you can see the system still sitting offshore and this ridge in the mid levels of the atmosphere this is the 500 millibar chart so about 10, uh, 18,000 feet up uh, this ridge over Pennsylvania and the Jersey coast and the northwest Atlantic continues to trap this down here and the nearest long wave trough hasn't even made it across the Rockies yet to the west and so there's no there's no strong steering flow to take this system northward and out of the area and by Sunday morning you can see it's still sitting offshore on the GFS here and this ridge is persistent to the north and east of it this long wave trough coming uh, toward the east is just now making it into the central plains on Sunday morning and uh, once this gets far enough east the southwesterly flow ahead of the trough will eventually carry this out over south and or North Carolina but it could take two three or even four days for this to finally move ashore and uh, the model tracks confirm that here with the model showing you can see if you can read this on your HD video lots of 96s um, over North Carolina that indicates that those are the positions the models have 90L at in 96 hours or four days from now Monday morning and that's how long some of these models take the system to actually move onto the continent landmass and uh, as long as it's over water it has a chance to strengthen now there are a lot of cold shelf waters right near the coast here within a hundred miles or so of the coast uh, as you leave the Gulf Stream the waters near the coastline are very cold and so the intensity models don't really strengthen this much I suspect because they are seeing the storm stalling out too close to the coast and encountering a lot of cold water and all the, these are the hurricane models all the global models as well universally weak in this as it approaches the coastline and that's good news if this does move slowly over the colder shelf water it may weaken or cease to strengthen upon nearing the coastline uh, but the issue is that if it stays further off the coast than forecasted by some of the models and stays over the warmer water further than 100 miles off the coast then it may have a chance to strengthen more than models suggest and we have seen this occur before where the convection feeds back and allows this to deepen systems like this 
uh, more than models expect. So we will have to monitor this carefully over the next few days and this will be with us for a while. And you can see the rain already moving on shore and if we look at the model forecasts, this is just for the next 60 hours valid Saturday evening. You can see two to four inches of rain raking the coastlines um, from Charleston all the way up through Wilmington and the beaches of North and South Carolina. And this is just a, the NAM model through 60 hours. It could be an additional 60 hours after that, that rain continues to fall in these areas. So heavy rainfall could become a primary concern with this as this sits and spins and spins and spins some more. So we will be watching this for quite a while. Again, the National Hurricane Center has not named the subtropical storm Ana yet, but I expect it will meet that criteria later today, and if not today, certainly tomorrow. And this will likely acquire a name at some point, but regardless of whether it's named or not, it's already generating tropical storm-like conditions in this convective band on the west side, and tropical storm force winds exist all throughout this area of the circulation. So this will be in blustery and wet weather toward the coastline with time as we head into this weekend. Certainly worth keeping an eye on if you live in this area. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.